Hi guys, welcome to the Big Spring Clean. And today I'm inviting you into the home office. So let me just start my video and stop my share. So thank you very much for joining me. This is the home filing system. And so I have all my personal files in here. Obviously, if there's anything that I want to have encrypted on the computer or on my hard drive, I've done that already. But for my hard copies, this is the filing system. So today we're talking about archiving versus shredding. So it's gonna be a fairly quick video actually, because I don't have too much to say. But one thing I find about this, this job is firstly, I don't tackle it enough. And secondly, when I do, I realize how easy some of the actions are. So I don't want to open, so let's look at some of the things that we have to put in this filing system or we need to shred. So um, we get post and in our post, we get different information. Some of it might just be a reminder or an update, but some of us don't enjoy opening the post so much. And so what can happen is it, it builds up and then you open it and you're like, oh, I don't need to do anything with that or they just need a number or a code and that's it. So there's some things that are really easy to action and you won't know until you've opened the, the letter. I think also there's some things that aren't so easy to deal with, maybe an ongoing situation or something that's bringing a lot of stress into your life. Well, the best way to tackle this is to know where we stand. The best way to tackle this is to open the post and then, you know, we can think about what we need to do next. So I'm going to just get some of my post here. So I've got a little stack here. Now I've got my diary under here. And my diary, at the beginning of the week, it might have a few things in it that I might need to relook at or research or contact someone. But by the end of the week, my aim is not to have pieces of paper in there. So, oh, here's another notebook, it's actual notes. So what I do is, um, for example, any important dates, I get a colored sticker and I put it in my diary. So I make sure I do that because what I find is it's easy to forget dates or if you don't go into your email account one morning, you don't get the alert. Whereas having a paper diary, which I have, which I'll have sitting in the home office archiving area, it means that I actually stumble across that book. I'll have a look at it. It's something, you know, I'll go over, have a look. It takes two seconds, but it means I don't miss any appointments. And the reason why I go for colours is because I do lifestyle, I do fitness, I do mental health awareness, and I do finance and administration. <laughs> So for me, at a glance, it's quite easy to look at the book to see that colour. Not everybody works in colours. Not everybody needs that point of reference. But I personally quite like to order it in that way. And then it's also very easy for me to see how I'm dividing my work. So if it's all green, that means I haven't been doing much um, fitness. If it's all blue, it means I haven't been doing much lifestyle. And sometimes that's fine. You know, you'll be working on a big project, but it's quite nice to be able to really easily assess your time flow. Okay, so, I mean, I got a letter here, which I actually did open. Now, when I receive letters from anywhere, really, official, and I'm not talking about business, so I'm not talking about all silver clouds, and we're talking about my personal archiving here. <laughs> I just want to make that clear because, you know, I don't have the same approach with all silver clouds that I do with my own personal information. So there's always time for all silver clouds, there's always time for business, but there's very little time for personal. So um, when I, normally when I receive a letter, I just think, oh, who is it this time? What have I done? I haven't actually done anything wrong. <laughs> Um, and and if I if they if if it was you know someone asking me for I don't know a subscription or a bill, then I need to open it so I can either cancel it or settle it. 
but I don't want to get in a situation where I've got a pile of mail and I don't actually know what's in there. So my advice to you, and it's really hard, if you're someone like me, and this is what I've been practicing, I looked at this and I just thought, don't question it. I opened it because that's what we're doing. I think with a lot of these things um, when it comes to lifestyle, and when I say lifestyle, I'm talking about your decluttering, your organizing in your home, but also your self-organization and limiting stress in your life by being prepared for things. It's a really, really challenging thing um, to do. But if you do do it, at least in certain aspects of your life, it will actually make your life a bit easier. And you get into the routine of doing these things. So instead of coming to this and going, oh, I've got post. Now I come to the post and I say, right, do you remember what I said to myself? No questions. Drip, drip, drip. What's in there? And I deal with it. All I can say is if it doesn't come naturally to you, then it's something you practice. And the more you practice something, the less you come to it, you know, with your original emotional response and the more you come to it as something practical. Okay, so what else? What else? You know, some of the great stuff that you get through the post. So let's see if I've got anything here. So this is an advert for insurance. Do you know what we can do with this advert? I opened it. I thought, no, I don't want this insurance. I shouldn't probably show it. And we've got the recycling bin here. So I've got a shredding machine. You can get loads of different types of shredders. You can get little handheld ones. Uh, you can get bigger ones where, you know, the electronic ones. So I've got an electronic one and it's, it's quite loud. So what I do is I, I don't want this. Oh, I hope you didn't see the name. So I'm just going to throw it in here. And then when I get to the end of my session, I'll go downstairs and I'll shred, shred, shred. Okay, so but yeah, I can actually put in the recycling. <laughs> see, so my pile is already smaller. Okay, so that's one of the things that we deal with. And all I can say is just open it. All right, the next thing you might deal with with archiving, which I find really challenging is, um, okay, so for example, I used to work in galleries and museums. And so we'll have like different, um, I've been, you know, involved in different exhibitions and different displays and been to different shows that we've done. <laughs> Some of these shows, you know, all my film programs, you know, I worked on myself. Some of the shows like this, um, this was craft work. He came to Tate. I didn't work on that particular show, um, but my colleague did. So when I look at something like this, I think it's a time, it's a place. I would like to keep it, but then if I need to get brutal about it, I didn't work on that show. Whereas I did work on all these film programs. So yeah then I have to start saying, well, if I've got too much stuff and I didn't work on this, and if I think it's a souvenir, maybe I should, you know, I can go and give it to a library. I could go and give it to an art school. I could go and give it back to the museum and say, you know, I don't know if you uh, send things on to people. Whereas if I throw away these things, I'm kind of throwing away my archive of what I've done. So I think these things have to come last if anything else has to go. So this is really a really difficult thing to do. Um, do you know what happened actually? The other day I was going through some of the work that I'd been doing at my previous gallery. I absolutely loved the gallery and I loved all the artists. And so I had so much stuff. I was I don't, I don't, I don't know what to let go of, you know, what's reasonable. I do, I have a good idea of what's reasonable, but then obviously my collector, my personal head comes on. So even as a lifestyle coach, you still have to go through these methods yourself. I think that as a lifestyle coach, I know, go through the process, there's no way around it. Um, but yeah, I still go through all these things that everyone else goes through. It's really tough. And that's why I love working with other people because, you know, if someone does need support doing these things, I can lend them some of my energy. And I've also got this kind of, attitude with myself now which is a don't question it do it you know that's the only way to get the results so 
I like to rub that off a bit on people I work with because then, you know, they start to see progress. Um, yeah, so that's generally like, and look, it's not, it's not housed very well either. So it's not like I put it in a lovely, you know, a lovely folder so I could go through and say, look, I worked on this show, I worked on that show. I think there was a lot, I mean, I'm not going to go into it in this video, but I think there was a lot of emotion around these jobs because, you know, there's a lot of things I've done in my life where I've loved it and I could keep doing it, but it's time to move on. It's time to push myself further, get more challenges. You know, when you've been the assistant for a while and now it's time to be the lead, it's, it's quite an emotional thing. So I don't think when it comes to the, these kind of items, we're just talking about get organized, open your post, be brave. We're actually talking about how do we reflect our work in a way that is contained so that we can live with all this stuff, but in the same, and displayed well as well. So, you know, we can show it off, but at the same time, you know, deal with the emotional side of going through the papers and going back into that, that state of mind when you were there before. So that's quite tough. Um, and, and that's what I was going to say. What was quite handy is when I worked at a previous gallery, as I said, I had a lot of materials. And I filled a bag of those materials the other day. It was just like notes and things from exhibitions. And I put them in another room. Because one thing I can recommend is if you are having trouble with letting go of things, you can always like fill a bag, give yourself like a bag or, a, you know, like a, a plastic bag, you know, like a bin bag size, not, not a tiny little bag, like a bin bag size. Um, or you can get yourself a big box and try and fill that box and say, right, let's get rid of as much as we can, paperwork, whatever I don't want. So I did that. And I knew I needed to go and shred it. This wasn't for archiving, this was for shredding. And yeah, it was gonna be a really difficult job because finally after all this time, I was gonna be like, shred, shred. And funny enough, somebody else came along and did it for me. And I'm actually really grateful, you know, so you've always got that fear, oh no, did I, maybe I want it back. But actually I was really grateful because I thought I don't, I don't need it. And on top of that, someone else is taking care, care of it for me so that I don't even have to review it again. And I, the, the decision's over now. There's no more questions. <laughs> and it's quite liberating. And so, um, you know, sometimes it's quite handy to have someone help you. It might just require you, I mean, not with your archiving materials and your, your paperwork, you really need to shred it. If you're letting go of it, you need to shred it. Um, and this person shredded it for me, but I didn't ask them. And I, th I think the point is, if you just can't bear to go through this stuff, try and put it in a big bag, send it off for shredding, ask someone else to help you. Um, if there's no private information in it, just put it in the bin, just get it out of your life like that. So I think the final thing I'm going to look at is folders. OK, so this folder is lovely and neat. It's all laid out. I shouldn't really go through too much of it. You can see I've been using dividers and labels and it's upside down so you can't read it. <laughs> anyway, the point is, so this is, this is, I maintain this really well. It's got everything in it, it's all organized. But you know what? This information is about, well, it's coming up to about seven years old now. So my first tip, I'm going to have three tips for you as usual. So my first tip is when it comes to paperwork, when it comes to what do I archive in terms of bills, in terms of receipts, invoices, even business accounts, we're looking at seven years. So certainly with your business, the first seven years, you need to archive those materials, anything to do with you know, your finances, anything to do with things that are relevant to your business or relevant to your personal life, that someone could ask you to recall, what was the reference? What date did you do this? Can you send me a scan of that? So that's fine. But after seven years, that tends to be the kind of cutoff point. So we can start to purge ourselves 
from all of those, you know, receipts and things we've been hanging on to. So looking at this folder, this folder has reached approximately seven years old. So despite how neat it is, its relevance is really, you know, kind of, you know, it's, I think the most relevance it has to me now is the fact that it shows how much work I did and it shows me some of the projects I was working on, but in terms of needing to record this information, you know, it's the time gone by now. So this is something I could look to disposing of. And of course we shred the personal information. Um, again, so if we want to go through, so for example, the, my oldest cabinet here, the blue one, that's bound to have things in it from potentially 10 years ago. Okay, so it's the big spring clean this week. So we were gonna make a massive effort, weren't we? So if we could try and set aside. Now, really, we're probably gonna need realistically, depending on how you are, if you're brutal about it, you're probably gonna need maybe 15, let's say half an hour to go through. Um, so I wouldn't even say half an hour. I'd literally say, to go through one of these would be about 15 minutes. If you want to be really methodical and really meticulous, which, you know, I, I'm quite like that, I'd probably take a bit longer, maybe 20 or 30 minutes. But the point is, this is information that sat there for the best part of seven years and I haven't had to touch it. So, <laughs> so um, but at the same time, I'm not just going to say, I'm not going to assume it's all seven years and shred it without going through it because. I might have put other things in there that I've forgotten about. I think if there's anything that I find in there, or if there's anything I find in here that I really, really want to hang on to, that, that will be of some use to me, then let's look at scanning it. Scanning it or taking a photograph. So my second tip is scanning or taking photographs of things. So basically, if you're gonna take a quick photograph, especially if it's just the information you need, or a reference so you can look it up in the future. Just take a little photograph. And the best thing you can do there, because you're gonna end up with loads of random photographs otherwise, is just send it to yourself, either to your email account and make a little folder, or probably even better, you know, what I would personally do is I'd, I'd um, plug my phone. If I took it on my phone, I'd plug my phone into my laptop and then I would carry over the pictures, quickly dump them in a folder, and there you go. So whenever I need to access them, I can. Whereas if we're just taking pictures of things and then just losing them into, into our phone, uh, you know, our, our million, of our thousands of, literally thousands of photographs on our iPhones and our other phones. Um, yeah, you know. Uh, lots of things get lost so if you really do want that information I do suggest that you take that photo and literally send it to your email and put it in a folder or, or, or plug your phone in at some point and when you do a data drop just you know dump it into a folder which you know just tells you what it's about <laughs> okay so and the other option is scanning so you scan straight to your computer uh, straight to your laptop or your computer so that's, that's, that's really straightforward as well. So I found after university, I had loads of notes. I had things that I'd written and I also had amazing um, articles and uh, papers that people had written. And I'd actually spent money in the library. So I spent money getting access to the library at university, not at university, so this was like Senate House. So um, when I was studying for my MA, I wasn't living in the main campus anymore. So Senate House was my big kind of, you know, library next to where I was studying. And, um, you know, obviously we got student rates and everything, but we did have to pay for photocopying. And I used to photocopy all sorts of stuff. because so I was one of those people, I'd either buy the book or I'd go and photocopy, photocopy, you know, photocopy it. And then that was it. I could go home and do it at my leisure. So I kind of thought, not only may I want to read those articles again, but also I, I, I invested time in them in the first place. So by just making a scan of them, now if I ever want to read them, I can. 
And I think because, I mean, I, I mean, I've got, I studied in the arts, so I've got three arts degrees. So the likelihood of me wanting to use those notes again at some point or trying to have some recall is, is high. I think if, you, if I'd studied geography and now I'm in the arts, oh, well, now I'm in lifestyle and fitness, but I also still work in the arts um, on a project basis, I probably wouldn't keep my geography notes. I'd probably move on. But because I've always worked in an artistic environment, it means that I never know when relevance is going to kind of come back, when my notes can be in vogue again. So, yeah. So anyway, that's kind of helped. Um, I think the other final tip that I had for you was to have an outro. So I have an outro. And what this basically means is when I've gone through all my posts, see, going through the posts can be really simple because what we can do, so I've got my post-its here. So what I can do is I can go through my post and say, oh, all my sticky notes. I can go through my post and say, okay, great. I'm going to deal with that. I need to write to someone. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't have time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a post-it to get a pen. I'm going to write a post-it. Okay, and let's write it up here because I've already got some writing on there. So, um, so I'm going to write on here, call. Okay, so I, I've written on here that I've got to call someone later. That's the action that I've got to do. Now I'm going to put that on the on the letter and I can put it in my out tray. And that's how I'm going to deal with my post. So recycling or out tray. Then what I'm going to do, or I should say in tray, but it will be our out tray because things in here need to go out. <laughs> They're not sitting here forever. Okay, so then when I've got that all sorted, I make the commitment to myself each week that on a by Friday, this out tray needs to be it needs to be empty and if it isn't there needs to be a new post-it on it saying why so what I need to follow up next but ideally before the weekend comes around this outtray should be empty and I think there's a lot of temptation like I've got a book in here that I haven't read and I'm like I just want to read this article I'll do it later I'll do it later so we need to make a commitment to clear the outtray or in tray, I mean, it's incoming stuff, so it's my in tray. But, so it's technically my in tray, but then once I've done these things, then it's my, it's, I look at it as my out tray because this stuff's got to go. <laughs> so it's up to you what you can call it. You can call it your red tray. You can call it whatever you like, whatever motivates you. I think that is the key to all of this. It's whatever motivates you to get things done, whether it's colors, music, shapes, um, different types of materials, maybe, you know, I really love this blue, blue box here. I love this blue box, so that's why I got it, because when I look at my work, I'm like, oh, blue box, silver cloud, you know, it makes me feel happy. Obviously, then I open it, and I'm like, oh, finance. <laughs> but anyway, so I'll put the outro up here. There's probably more private information in this one. So I don't tend to put anything too private in my outro, just because I'm, you know, a bit funny about it. Um, but, you know, it's totally up to you what you do, how you organize yourself. Um, so in here, I've got certain things like contracts and I just like them to be enclosed. Uh, actually, there is one thing I want to say before we go. So this is about just like safety. So if you notice, I've got locks. Well, you can quite see. I've got locks on every single one. So I've got a pink drawer, grey, blue and silver. OK, obviously, I mean, I would never leave the key in when I leave, but I've left it in because I'm here. I'm actually working at home a lot. And also I can make this point, <laughs> remember? But yeah, so I lock all of them. So I think that's that's quite important, you know, if you're ever worried about anyone being able to get hold of your information, 
at least if you lock it, that you know, it's, it's a lot more hassle for them. And so, um, yeah. <laughs> okay guys and I think if you're really concerned about anything at all then you can always get a home safe as well so they're quite handy and you know with the keys you need to find something say like for instance I've got a bookcase over here um I didn't want all the books to distract us but we've got a bookcase here which you'll see at the weekend and I'll have a little pot and I'll just put the keys in there so you know it just means that I know where they are because if you don't have a pot for the keys you'll lose the keys as well <laughs> okay guys i think that's that's it for today um so good luck with this job it's a pretty tough one but literally just say to yourself the, the first way to get your to get your momentum going is to do the simple things so grab your post don't say to yourself oh i'll throw that down or shall i look at that later open it and that that is your starting point and as I said, big spring clean week. So if you can try clearing out one of your boxes that might have like more, instead of archive, more shredding material, then let's do it this week. And then we don't have to think about it for another seven years. All right then. <laughs> okay guys, thanks so much. And I hope you enjoy your archiving and shredding. And tomorrow I'll be talking about the clothes cupboard. So I hope you can join me. It's very much going to be talking about, I mean, I'm going to show you a clothes cupboard, which is absolutely packed. So we're not talking about male clothes. We're not talking about female clothes. We're literally talking about volume. Uh, I mean, obviously it's going to be female clothes because I'm going to go through, through one of my cupboards. Um, and this is a cupboard which is very neglected, which I haven't been through for a long time. So it will be female clothes. <laughs> But what I am actually trying to illustrate is, you know, when a cupboard goes out of control. So I want everyone to join me. All right. Thank you so much. And I'll see you then.